<laughs> After two years of successfully avoiding COVID-19, I finally tested positive a couple days ago. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to talk about COVID-19 and all of the psychology and behavioral science that's been going on over the last two years related to it. Let's begin with lockdowns. When we all went into lockdown number one, it was a major habit discontinuity event. Habit discontinuity is when our daily environment changes very dramatically, making new habits form more easily and old habits breaking more easily too. When we all were forced to stay in our homes all day, this was a big change to our daily routine, which means that many of us broke our old habits and developed new ones. Some of us became lockdown bakers. Some of us became lockdown TikTok stars. Some of us started behavioral science YouTube channels out of sheer boredom. Or maybe that was just me. Okay, next let's talk about panic buying. Whether it's pasta, flour, or toilet roll, people were panic buying items off the shelves of supermarkets like there was no tomorrow because I guess, well, people thought maybe there was no tomorrow. Behaviorally, it's a pretty peculiar phenomenon to see so many people engaging in very erratic behavior like this. So let's talk about it. The most obvious psychological principle to point to here is obviously social norms and the bandwagon effect. It's basically, if you see a bunch of other people doing something, then you're more likely to do it yourself. So when everybody else was clearing out the shelves and buying as much stuff as they could, when even if you didn't think that that was very sensible, you're more likely to do it just because you see everyone else doing it. But the other thing that people don't talk about as much is anchoring. So because of all this panic buying, a lot of supermarkets were putting limits on items. You could only buy two packets of pasta. But one potential backfire that was caused by all of these limits is actually anchoring people to a higher number. This means that people who were only intending to buy one of these items may have ended up leaving the shop with two because simply they were told that they could only buy a maximum of two and so they thought they'd better max it out. All right, next let's talk about remote working. Almost every company in the world started remote working due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Before the pandemic, remote working was an almost non-existent thing, despite the technology being there to facilitate it. So why did it take a global pandemic to initiate this new social norm? Well, it's probably due to something which author Annie Duke calls forced quitting. Forced quitting is basically a subset of habit discontinuity events, which is when we're forced to quit something which we've been doing for a long time. Because we were all forced to quit working in the office, it meant that we ended up exploring new work options which we otherwise would never have done. And while a lot of people People hate remote working, there's a lot of people who really love it. They love the fact that they don't have to live so close to the office, which saves them a fortune on living costs. They love the fact that they can work with people from all over the world, and that's very easy to do now that you don't have to be there in person. They love the fact that they don't have to commute, and that saves them loads of time every day, which gives them more time to do things like spend time with their family, cook healthier meals, and so on. So this is a good example of how forced quitting can actually be beneficial for us. While we tend to derive negative connotations to people who quit things, actually quitting can sometimes be good for our psychology because it allows us to explore new options options that might actually end up being better for us. Okay, and let's move on to mask wearing and polarization. Now, in the beginning of the pandemic, there was no vaccine, and so our only solution to COVID was behavioral. We had to social distance and we had to wear masks. But as you all know, this quickly became a very polarizing issue between people, where mask wearing not only became a way to protect yourself, but also became a signal of your identity and what political allegiance that you had. Wear a mask, which you can certainly do. You are further pushing the agenda that is condemning all of us. Now, it's pretty easy to see how social media plays a very large role in this kind of polarization. Lockdown meant that we were spending a lot more time talking to each other on social media rather than actually talking to each other in real life and meeting people. This is bad for polarization because it means that we only end up talking to people who we like and the people who we like are people who agree with our world point of view. This is because of something called confirmation bias in psychology, which says that we tend to seek out and overweight information that agrees with our point of view and disregard and ignore information that disagrees with us. And the really cool thing about social media is that there's a recommendation algorithm that's designed to present information to you that they think that you'll like. And because you tend to like things that agree with you, that means that the recommendation algorithm will keep presenting posts and comments and articles of stuff that agrees with your point of view rather than counterfactual points of view. This means that you're just in a constant echo chamber of information, only hearing your own point of view and never hearing the alternative side, which of course leads to more polarization. Speaking of polarization, whoa, look, a vaccine just got invented. Let's talk about that.
When the vaccine got invented, a lot of people were very hesitant to get it, and a lot of people still are, and understandably so. People didn't really understand how a vaccine could be made in so quick a time, and they didn't really understand how this new vaccine would work anyway. Now, many news outlets tried to overcome this problem by producing educational materials, which helped people to understand how the vaccine worked and therefore increase their trust in it. This is due to something called operational transparency. This is a principle in psychology that says that when we understand how something works and operates, we're actually more likely to trust the outcome of it. And so by explaining how the vaccine actually worked at a scientific level, more people were willing to take it. The government, of course, tried to use its classic authority bias, which basically said that, hey, look, we're the government, and so you should take this thing, and so people did it. And there's also this other aspect of, hey, we have highly qualified scientists actually recommending this thing, and so therefore more people were willing to take it then as well. But despite all of these psychological levers being pulled, there's still a large swathe of the population who don't believe in vaccines and don't believe that they should be taking it. But again, using behavioral science can help people overcome this psychological hurdle. Katie Milkman, one of my favorite behavioral scientists who I spoke to a few months ago, led this huge study along with a massive list of behavioral science superstars in order to test if they could get more people to show up to their vaccine appointments by simply changing the words on their reminder text. After testing loads of different text messages, they found that the most effective one was when they told people that the vaccine was reserved for them. By saying that the vaccine was reserved specifically for them, they increased people's ownership over the vaccine, which takes advantage of something called the endowment effect. The endowment effect basically says that people tend to value things that they own over equivalent things that they don't own. So by simply changing the wording on a simple text message, they were actually able to increase vaccination rates by 11%. And when you multiply that across hundreds of millions of Americans, that's actually a very significant number of people. So that's a bunch of behavioral science that happened during the pandemic. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Sorry that I sound and look like a total mess, but I really couldn't bring myself to try and look pretty for this video. So... Um, yeah, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.